Right now, everyone's talking about how to clean and disinfect for the coronavirus. Uh, today, we're going to talk to an expert who has some interesting information to share with us about using ozone to disinfect with. Uh, David Hart is the founder of Ramair International, and he has a patent on an ozone generator that's used by many, including in the HVAC or duct cleaning space. But what we want to concentrate on is, can ozone be used as a disinfectant? Well, David, thank you so much for joining us today. It's a pleasure to have you on Straight Talk. Thank you. Hope you're doing well. Very well, thank you. Good. Everyone's busy during this uh, pandemic crisis, and I think uh, you have been especially, as you work on a unique angle, perhaps with making things safe for people in buildings. Um, you know, we, we've been talking about disinfectants a lot, and in Clean Facts and ISSA publications, we cover the traditional use of disinfectants and using them to make safer environments, safer surfaces. But what about ozone? I know that's your specialty, one of your specialties. How does ozone play into this as a possible method of disinfection? Well, that's a great question, and it's a question that's being asked a lot right now. Uh, disinfecting, of course, is the big buzz. And uh, I've been checking with a lot of the distributors, distributors that carry our products as well, asking them, how are you doing on your supplies? And I've heard everything from distributors from, we are six weeks back ordered. Everybody's out, first of all. Everybody's out of disinfectant. Yes, that's true. They're either six weeks out. I've heard as much as 30 weeks back ordered on getting liquid uh, disinfectants and whatnot available. And I reached out to another one of our distributors and I asked them, how are you doing on ozone generator supply? Are you running low because of the pandemic? And the distributor representative answered me with, she kind of chuckled and said, well, ozone is used for odor removal. It doesn't have anything to do with this. And that was the final thing that made me realize, you know, that we need to get some education out there on ozone's efficacy as a disinfectant. So this is, this is great because that's new information for me. I know ozone works well on smoke. Uh, people use it on vehicles for those that have uh, smokers uh, after fire uh, losses. Am I correct? Very, very common for that. Yeah, very mm -hmm. common. Uh, what, and duct cleaning, I believe. It's used for uh, HVAC. It's a great, uh, because ozone is a gas, uh, and I'm going to quote uh, Dr. Gerard Sonnen, who's in New York. He is actually involved in cutting edge ozone therapy and the use of ozone as it is, in fact. And I got him on the phone, fortunately, last week, and we discussed this very thing. And his words were, because ozone is a gas and not a liquid, it can penetrate areas that a liquid can't. Mm -hmm. so, so there's that. Okay, th that's cool. So David, this is interesting, thinking about using ozone as a disinfectant, because obviously that would be a big help in the days we're living right now. Tell us, how does it work in buildings? How do folks use it? Well, ozone is brought in by way of an ozone generator. Uh, what happens is a generator is a unit that pulls in ambient air from one end, and then by way of either a UV light or corona discharge plate, it slices, if you will, oxygen molecules. The ambient air that we're breathing right now is comprised of about 20% oxygen. It pulls the air in from the back of the unit. By way of corona discharge, which is electrical arc, if you will, it slices the oxygen O2 molecules in half. Then when they get to the front of the unit, they recombine with O2 molecules that are in the ambient air and create O3. And that's what ozone is. Ozone is O3. And then it expels that out of the front of the unit. And one of the beautiful things about ozone is you don't need to be present. In fact, you aren't present while it's doing the work for you. So rather than suiting up in PPE gear and filling your, your, uh, sit your tools with uh, whatever solution you want to disinfect and, and going through the process, it allows you to bring in the generator, set it inside the space, program it for the amount of time you want it to run and press the button for it to turn on, you leave and it does the disinfecting while you're gone. Then because ozone has a short half-life of about a half hour to an hour, that ozone reverts back to regular oxygen very quickly. So after it shuts off, you can come back into the space, grab your ozone generator, and you have now completed the disinfecting process. Okay, so that sounds cool. Obviously, this would be in unoccupied spaces. So Correct. something you would do off hours when the building's not in use. Vacate, vacate, 
place while it's being worked on. Yeah. Okay. So is this on the EPA's radar? I mean, the EPA has a list of disinfectants they approve that they, and they have that on their website. What right. about ozone? I don't see it there. Well, the EPA has what they call their in list. And those are uh, sanitizers and disinfectors on their list. Ozone is not on that list because it is generated by a machine. It's not applied physically by hand to surfaces. So therefore, it's not, not being on the list of the EPA doesn't discredit its use. It's just simply not within the parameters of what they list on their in list. Okay, uh, so I, I bet folks are gonna wanna know this. What does ozone do to bacteria or contaminants or like this coronavirus on a surface of a table or uh, an object? What does it do? Great question. Well, being as ozone is an oxidizer, that meaning, meaning it adds an oxygen atom to the surface of whatever it is that you're treating, uh, it's effective is a disinfectant for pathogenic bacteria, fungi, and viruses. Now with bacteria and fungi, we use the term kill. We kill those, those microbial cells. With a virus, because it's not exactly a living organism, we don't use the term kill, we use the term inactivate. And the way that it inactivates, I just happen to have this little diagram here. Okay, uh, just happen to have it, huh? I just happen to have it right here. I take it with me wherever I go. All right. uh, it's, a, it's a virus, and we're pretty familiar with these spikes that, that are low, they're called peplomars. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, as well as the membrane, membrane here, are what's called a lipid membrane. The protein coats is what they are. And the ozone solubilizes, or in other words, dissolves the membrane coat of the virus. Inside the virus is the RNA, and that's what replicates itself inside the host cell, causing damage. But uh, the ozone will oxidize, solubilize, and dissolve that coat, thereby destroying the virus. Zap it away. Zaps it away. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, okay, so you do that. You run the machine in a, in a building. I, I imagine there's a formula for how many machines you would need to generate ozone per the space. I suppose there's a formula for that. Well, actually, that's interesting you would say that. I had a conversation with, I've spoken with a lot of very interesting people over the course of the last week, and I've had the, the, the fortunate luck of getting in contact with, for example, Ger Dr. Gerard Sonnen, who I mentioned in New York City, also Dr. Paul Meachin, who is a former director of the CDC and currently scientific advisor for GBAC, yes. the Biorisk Advisory Council. Uh, he was very generous with his time on the phone with me as well. And I simply asked him, I said, doctor, can you tell me, what can you tell me about ozone as a disinfectant, uh, especially as it pertains to what we call the novel coronavirus, we heard the term COVID-19, the International Committee on Taxonomy and Viruses actually says that the accurate term is SARS-CoV-2. So that's how I'll refer to it in this conversation. I asked him, what can you tell me about ozone's efficacy? And I'm gonna quote, he said, does ozone work, you betcha. Those were his words. I like those quote, that quote, yeah. Right, right. Well, he's a good down-to-earth guy. And uh, then we went into some detail as to how, and we discussed the uh, membrane that I just showed in the diagram. As, as for the, uh, the equation, or the, the, how much to use and whatnot, we also discussed that. And it seems as though, well, first of all, this virus, because it's an enveloped virus in that it does have that membrane, uh, is more easily inactivated than to what we refer as non-enveloped viruses or naked viruses. They are also inactivated by having the capsid or the RNA uh, destroyed directly, but we can, we can uh, solubilize the membranes on these, which is a little easier. So these are very easily affected mem uh, viruses with ozone. And uh, one ppm is a pretty entry level concentration of ozone. Uh, if you have a decent ozone generator, you can reach that pretty quickly. And uh, according to Dr. Meachin, within seconds, you should be able to uh, solubilize that membrane. Okay, that very good. Uh, so, so the question is, when the job's all done, mm -hmm. how do you know, how do you test to make sure it's disinfected that those viruses are gone, inactivated, as you mentioned? Right. Well, it would be the same method that you would use during any other disinfectant uh, okay. uh, process. Uh, once again, you're, you're reliant upon uh, 
prior laboratory testing, field testing, and whatnot, of which case there is substantial amount with ozone as well as other disinfectants as well. So as long as you go by that protocol, you should be good. Yeah. All right. Well, David, this is interesting. Uh, maybe we'll see more ozone use soon with this current pandemic and in the future for uh, dealing with these same kinds of challenges. I, I, I hope we do. Uh, it has a great efficacy for it. It's uh, an easily accessible machine. They're pretty oftentimes re reasonably priced. And one of the beautiful things, like I mentioned earlier, you don't have to fill it up with liquids. You don't have to buy more stuff to put into it to keep it going. You plug it in, you press a button, and it does the work for you while you go uh, make yourself productive somewhere else. And I do believe that the raw ingredient needed is pretty free. It's pretty free. It's all around us. <laughs> all right. Right now. So let's turn air into a good disinfectant. Let's do it. All right. Thank you, David. Thank you.